Well, I think we don't have a choice. So it cannot be a dream. The fact is that Africa has been de-industrializing, meaning that we've been losing value added in manufacturing and regressing back to where we are more and more dependent on primary products and natural resources. And that's why we are not creating enough jobs for our young people, quality jobs. So we need to stand back and ask ourselves, how do we get out of this trap? And maybe that is why this theme of accelerating industrialization, but it can no longer be in the typical way that we talk about industrialization. And that's what the whole debate is about. Because if you look at, if you go back to the old fashioned manufacturing, what we are now in is a digital and a robotics and artificial intelligence revolution. They are calling it the fourth industrial revolution, where you have all these new technologies that are changing the way we live and the way we work. So when we talk about accelerating, I don't think we should just think of it in terms of the typical manufacturing industries that we have. That was in the past. We have to look to the future because with the new technologies, it's changing the way that manufacturing is happening. So we need to accelerate our progress into this digital revolution that is happening. I think that's what the issue is about. If we don't, then we are going to be left even further behind. And we can use some of these new technologies to leapfrog those things that we are missing. There are people who say that Africa has not finished the second and third industrial revolution. Why are we talking about a fourth? The fourth and a because, fifth. you know, when you have, you know, so a huge percentage of the population with no access to electricity on the continent, manufacturing uh, industries that are there don't have constant supply of electricity or even water and other infrastructure. How can you talk of a fourth industrial revolution? I think the way you need to look at it is to step back and say, what in this new technology can help us bridge the gap we don't have? If we don't have electricity, if there are so many people, more than 50% in some countries, 60% who don't have access in certain countries, how do you reach those people? And typically, they are the people at the bottom end of the ladder. Can we use renewables? Can we use off-grid solutions? So that at least they get power so their children can read, so they can have clean water, so that women don't have to be tied to doing the types of chores that take them away from making, empowering themselves and their families. You have to ask. That's what acceleration means to me. Now, we have been having these conversations continent-wide for years now, and they have led to policies that have unfortunately been, able, been unable rather, to fast-track development as quickly as we want. What are your thoughts? Now, you, now you, you were Nigeria's longest-serving uh, finance minister, so you have had access to policyholders over the years. What are your thoughts on strategies that we could actually use to fast-track implementation of these policies? I, I, my thoughts are that... Um, we, we need to get our policy makers to be consistent in following policies that when we change governments, when we change actors, we don't have to throw away the policies. If you look at all the countries that have developed, you will see that one of the reasons is that they had a vision for the country and a strategy. So people may come and go, but they pursue steadily the same strategy. One of the things being discussed here and the criticisms of Africa in this forum of the ADB meeting is that we have so much policy inconsistency on the continent. Therefore, you start to improve the way a country does something. You start to improve infrastructure and a new set of actors come. They decide that these were projects championed by the past policy makers and therefore they need to start new ones and before they can finish the ones they've started another set of people come so you never quite get a holistic picture so for us to really move po forward uh, on development we've got to change our approach and our thinking each country has to agree what are the incontrovertible policies what are the incontrovertible parts of development that we must pursue no matter who comes into government Part of our problem that I have seen as a, is that policy inconsistency, project inconsistency that doesn't allow us to finish things that get started for the country.
So for you now, it's about uh, focusing on building institutions. Yes, building institutions, building infrastructure. Institutions are one kind of infrastructure, but Africans have also need physical and human infrastructure. There are three things that we have to do on the continent to break through. And these were things we were trying to concentrate on when I was in, in, in government also. One is physical infrastructure. Many of our people on the continent don't really want much. They want roads. They want, now we need digital infrastructure because we're in the uh, a, a technology age. So you need to, to begin to lay the kind of infrastructure that can allow people access to knowledge, to the internet, to their mobile phones working. They want access to electricity. And we now have fourth industrial revolution technologies that can do that. We have wind, we have solar on the continent. We don't need to import it from elsewhere. Why can't we capitalize on it? Now the cost of solar panels and solar technology is so inexpensive, it's comparable in most cases to generating power from the usual sources, oil, gas, and so on. So why can't we do that? And we, then we open up many of our people in rural areas who have access. We now even have some technologies that can allow small and medium enterprises to run their businesses without being on grid. Why can't we adopt that? In Nigeria, you have a company called Lumos that I know about that is working. It has these technologies and solar-powered batteries that can power SMEs. In East Africa, it's in Copa that can power off-grid solutions. So those are just some of the examples. On, in terms of financial technologies, we just spoke here about Mpesa. Well, Africa, Kenya pioneered this fintech, this financial technology, this payment system. And almost more than 74, 75% of Kenya's people are using this. It's gone into six or seven other African countries, but why hasn't it gone beyond that? This is something that works, a payment system developed on our own continent. Why can't we scale it up to the entire continent? Then everybody can have access. You can do all your transactions via your, your mobile phone. But for some reason, it's been years now, we've not been able to scale it. So we can do that. I'm telling you, the fourth industrial revolution has arrived in Africa, but we haven't realized it. We haven't seized on it. Policymakers have not capitalized on it to use it to solve our problems. So